Hello and welcome to the CX Summit. My name is Charlie, I'm the Senior Editor of CX Today and today I'm delighted to be joined by John DeArna, President and CEO at Hammer. John, it's great to have you join us. How are you doing today? Great, Charlie. Thank you for having me. I really do appreciate the opportunity to be part of the summit. Yeah, and it's really great to do a featured um, session with you and uh, where we're going to be looking about how the contact center become, can become more of a central cog in the customer experience machine in uh, 2022. And we've also got lots of kind of interesting hammer uh, research uh, that you've created to delve into as well. But first things first, I was wondering if you could give us a little bit of an introduction uh, sure. as, to your, um, as to your background and uh, hammer. Great. Well, Charlie, I've been actually part of test and measurement for my entire career, starting out at HP and um, and then working through in 2008, I became CEO of a company called Empirix. Hammer was part of Empirix. Uh, you may or may not know Hammer's been around for we're hitting our 30th anniversary this year. I was very fortunate to take over the company in 2008. So I was CEO uh as part of that uh organization and last year we sold it to infovista uh infovista has now spun us out into uh its own entity within the infovista family so i head up that organization within infovista so i run hammer as you could see so uh that's, excellent yeah that's so my start around there yeah, sorry, I cut you off there, but it's yeah, it's very fascinating to know that Hammer's been around for 30 years, actually. You kind of see all the stuff that you're doing in kind of the newer kind of omni-channel and uh, digital realms, and that's very, it's yeah. very fascinating. And uh, in that time, you've also kind of done lots of um, global uh, research and kind of looking at that before um, today's session, kind of I noticed there was lots of challenges that you've uh, noted within the report that contact centers are facing in 2022. I was just wondering if you could tell me a little bit about those and your findings. Yeah, sure. You know, we, uh, uh, we've been in this business obviously a long time. And uh, what we wanted to do is understand all the dynamics of what's, what's a day in the life of a contact center in 2022, right? And in particular, you know, what are the real challenges? What are the people experiencing? So we've actually engaged and spoke to over 1,500 global contact center leaders across technical, strategic roles, head of CX, head of contact center operations, quality assurance engineering. And we've discovered, I'd say, three key high-level trends, right? First, and no surprise, that there's a tremendous amount of pressure. 90% of contact center leaders are feeling that they have, the business has unrealistic expectations of them, right? Contact volumes are still rising across all the channels. Call abandonment rates have increased. Average speed to answer has increased. On top of that, uh, agents and customers are leaving organizations at great greater numbers than ever before. You look at the hybrid work environment, that's created a real challenge for these organizations, not just from agents and the cognitive load that is becoming an increasing problem for them. But if you also look at, it's not only the hybrid work environment, it's the hybrid technology in the networks themselves, whether it's uh, be you know all private public cloud-based or um, on-prem technologies. Just think of all of those different uh, challenges that people are facing. And of course, that at home version, which you and I have experienced ourselves in our own networks, right? Secondly, we found it's 80% of the organizations in the survey have migrated all their contact centers uh, or part of them to the cloud. We were actually surprised because we actually thought that that was going to go a lot faster than it has. You know, we're, we've been preparing for this for years and it's really starting to kick in now and it's a real exciting place to be in the marketplace. Uh, but I'll tell you, looking at that, um, it creates a huge amount of complexity as we just spoke. So again, a good number have moved. We've also found that 39% of contact centers have a mix of home-based and contact center-based agents. 30% of them are still contact center-based 
all entirely and the other 30 percent uh, there's another 30 percent that are entirely remote right so you look at that and you uh realize that 70 percent of contact centers have experienced challenges around voice quality for home-based agents over the last 12 months because you think about just that now you're adding another level of complexity around the environments, the technology, the networks themselves that you didn't have before. So you're seeing a lot more uh, problems and, you know, over or almost, I'll say 70% of those contact centers say the frequency of outages has increased over the last 12 months. So there's obvious problems that need to be fixed, right? And uh, when you look at it, and it's got to be from an NN perspective in the way that you look at uh, the networks, the environments uh, that these people are operating in. Thirdly, we found that a major source of frustration is the conflict between maintaining business as usual uh, while delivering the technology improvements uh, that the business needs to achieve those results. Again, a lot of pressure coming from the business side. Right, so you look at uh, the rate of change. 96% of contact centers are planning upgrades to their technology over the next 12 to 24 months. That's kind of obvious with all the technology change that's happening out there and the rate of change that's occurring and the demands that the business is putting on those, uh, on those businesses. They're also saying that uh, they cannot deliver software updates quickly enough uh, with the demands of the business and they're really struggling to drive those changes, right? And you have all of that change and all that complexity, right? You're going to create problems and customer satisfaction issues. 87% are saying they're not able to properly test upgrades um, and improvement projects before they go live. We know being in the testing business, if you don't test, you're opening yourself up for problems because you will, uh, you know, we're in the soft world of software. There are always problems and you try to catch them in advance. But if you don't do any testing, it's just like any QA. If you don't do any QA, any testing, you're not going to uh, catch them in advance and your customers are going to find it or your business is going to uh, find it and create problems. The other problem that people are having, though, one last point is that people don't have enough resources, right, in their development teams, and agile is not really agile enough. Uh, we all see that. Anyone, anyone in software, anyone in um, in these environments, know that uh, the rate of change is high. The turn in an agile environment is high. Needing to do testing as part of that agile process is critical and um, something gives. And usually this is the part that gives. Sorry, John. Yeah, no, absolutely. I was just gonna say there's lots of really interesting research that you've just uh, presented there and lots of fascinating statistics to unpack, but there seems to be kind of a common theme running through um, a lot of that information in that contact centers are struggling to kind of advance their technology ecosystems. Mm -hmm. What sort of implications do you think that has to the broader customer experience? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, the way I see it, many contact centers are trapped in a kind of vicious circle. They have to deal with the escalating number of calls, fewer agents, changing technology. Uh, this in itself uh, causes services failures, leading to repeat calls, et cetera. At the same time, we simply don't have the bandwidth or the resources to implement the technology improvements, right? Such as uh, IVR updates, self-service, or whatever it might be, what's actually uh, necessary to provide the customer experience. So you, you, you see, they know they need to do these things, but they can't. There's too much of a push in the business in order to do that, not enough resources. We see a huge opportunity from our side because uh, we can help the industry and these companies overcome these challenges. We want to be the heroes. I know that's a part of our theme here, uh, but it's all really about being the enabler uh, for the contact center to fulfill its potential to create uh, an exceptional uh, customer experience. But in order to do that, you have to have a fully end-to-end -end 
uh, solution and be able to test end to end, right? So uh, we see that as a huge opportunity for us to come in and enable that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, as you said, the, the, from um, that response, that, that kind of managing that end to end journey is kind of very difficult and ensuring that there's a technology uh, uh, in place is kind of a vicious circle as the experience is kind of constantly evolving. What do you think um, can uh, contact centers can do to kind of break that vicious cycle? Well, there's been great advances uh, around automated testing and um, that's the one area that you can uh, implement or we see as a way to overcome some of these key challenges. For example, Hammer Voice Explorer. One of the things we can do is we can go through and look through the IVR and understand all the call flows because a lot of times these IVRs, they're, they're not documented well, right? All the calls and, and the documentation is, is, uh, is a challenge for a lot of companies. They want to go through changes and, um, and they can't. So we can automate that process. And then we can change the amount of testing that's actually done and automate that testing so it can go much more quickly. The problem I see is that the improvement projects are often rushed through, very little planning and testing in advance, right? That means that the business doesn't deliver on air anticipated ROI, and on top of that, there's no time to put things right, right? It's so much harder. It seems counterintuitive, but you have to spend a little bit more time up front to do it the, the proper way. And automated testing can test. So we can go in and test hundreds, if not thousands of different scenarios in, in advance of an implementation and do it in hours rather than days and weeks involved in manual testing, which a lot of people are still doing, which is kind of interesting. Um, but as you know, anytime you do manual testing, it's prone to uh, human error and, and um, you know, automating it is the way to go. You know, we can, through testing, we can deliver a blueprint for success for our customers, ensuring that technology and the improvements in the projects really do deliver um, what is expected from the business, right? And, um, and deliver that outstanding customer experience. Yeah, absolutely. From all of that, there's obviously a number of very kind of clear benefits, not only in terms of uh, maybe eliminating downtime and kind of continuous and continuously kind of monitoring systems like the IPR and network um, and things like that. But there's also the possibility to to accelerate contact center transformation um, as well. And I think, you know, there's many from what seems kind of just testing, there are many different benefits that seem to stem uh, from within that. And you kind of gave a couple of really good examples, especially like the IVR example of kind of digging in, um, digging into that. Do you have any kind of other further examples or maybe kind of case study kind of examples um, yeah. of where it can drive value? Well, let's take cloud migration as an example, right? Over 80% of the organizations, as mentioned before, are migrating some or all of their contact center to the cloud, right? And others are remaining firmly on premise, right? It creates a lot of complexity in the technologies. When uh, planning uh, those cloud migrations, 73% um, saw it as an opportunity to also redesign the contact center as a whole. However, the challenge that you have with that is that uh, configuration audits, a large percentage are not doing conf configuration audits before migrations, creating a lot of um, a significant challenges you you would imagine in having that uh, configuration audit done. 35% strongly agree that they uh, completed migration experience without any downtime or outages. Uh, but when you look at that, what does that tell you? 65% of these uh, had significant challenges uh, through that. I mean, and the final outcome was, you know, roughly a third uh, really achieve the goals that they wanted to. So again, you go into, um, you know, the prep that you do in advance and understanding the environment and then being able to uh, test in advance. So let's uh, take an IBR as an example, right? As many as 75% of the contact center leaders in our survey 
said that the regular occurrence for a call to be routed via IVR to an agent without information pop, if you will, uh, appeared on the desktop. So the CTI pop did not occur. Again, reinforcing the need to do end to end, right? How many times we all get on a call with, uh, with an agent and they ask you the same question you just finished telling them. Think about the lost time productivity, the frustration with the agent, the challenges that these people have, right? Doing that testing in advance, fully end to end to that desktop is critical. We, you know, we, and we uncover several paradoxes with this, right? As an example, 77% of the people in our survey said that they have a, a facility to do testing for IVR when they do uh, updates, but 68% of the customers still complain about being caught in that IVR loop, right? And so you have to ask, is there enough testing being done uh, with automation? This wouldn't happen because you expand the, the amount of testing you do. Typically, you know, years ago when it was all about manual testing or manually um, uh, uh, mapping out the IVR, you would have a situation where you're, you're testing maybe five, 10% of the environment. Today, you can test virtually 100% of that IVR and, and all the pathways and do the QA testing appropriately. Get the, the, the amount of testing that you need to get done across the environment and then take that and do the depth of testing on load testing with that. So you take those tests, you've mapped out, you do the QA side, and then you do the, uh, the true emulation under load in the environment to see what really happens. Because as, again, when you change the networks with these environments, you wind up putting yourself in a situation where, although yes, when it was on-prem, it all worked well. Now you go to the cloud, now you go to a public cloud. Does it scale? And you need to be able to test that because that's a lot of times where we see these systems falling over. You know, at Hammer, we not only uh, provide a solution for self-service, but when clients, when, when customers, when folks out there going through these transitions need help, we can also bring the expertise. If you have limitations in your manpower or expertise, we have a managed services team with over 100 years of testing experience and we could be your partner. We've been in this business 30 years. We know how to do this. We are the experts in it and we can automate that process. So Charlie, as we say, it's hammer time. So <laughs> we look forward oh, yeah. to uh, working with their customers here. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I think it's, it truly is kind of amazing. We talk about the 30 years ago, I mentioned it before, but to, to think, you know, this, this solution as it is now and all the kind of all the possibilities it does in the kind of remote and hybrid uh, environments. And there's some of those omnichannel examples that you gave, kind of being able to tell if um, the, if the uh, customer context is traveling as, as designed um, through omnichannel interactions. I think that's, that's a really interesting uh, use case. And, you know, organizations yeah. put so much money into these sort of technologies to be able to ensure that they work is such a fun fundamental uh, for contact centers. So I think there's lots of really great stuff there again, and also loved all the research. And, you know, we've mentioned this study quite a lot, and I don't know if you could quickly just tell all um, the viewers where they can kind of uh, find out more from Hammer and kind of all of these studies that you guys are doing. Yeah, that's great, Charlie. We'd be glad to uh, share that. We'll be sharing our findings in eBooks and other releases. Follow us at, uh, on LinkedIn or other social channels. And of course, our website at hammer.com. Excellent. I think that's a really great place to end today's chat. Um, John, it's been really great talking to you. I've learned um, a lot about kind of contact centers and kind of a lot of the challenges that they face, actually. So thank you uh, very much uh, for joining me. Charlie, it's been a great pleasure. And thank me. Thank you for having me. Yes, absolutely. And it's great also to learn about Hammer and how you're helping to solve those uh, problems. I will quickly just add that before we end. But thank you, everybody, for watching um, as well. And bye for now.